Hello, it's not Fran. I'm going to take a quick look at a new modulator I bought, FieldTech. It's probably pretty similar to the other FieldTech line, but I bought the one a little more expensive with a metal case. And I'm going to test a few things on it. I also want to see the resonant frequency of this speaker. First I'm going to look at the impedance of the output of this thing. Well, I could look it up, I'm sure. Well, before I even get into that, it came in a nice box. And it comes with the software. I think this is what you use to uh, design your own custom wave. I hope it's Windows 10 compatible. And it came with uh, all the cables you really need. Actually, I might have thrown one of these in, I don't know. And I think it came with the power supply too. A little switch mode uh, wall wart. It can also be powered up by USB power. See that USB cable through your computer or whatever. And I guess that you'd also obviously uh, connect that with the software and do your own wave. I got the 20 megahertz version. You can get a 25 megahertz version yet. So I guess I'm pretty far up there. I think it was like roughly 70 bucks. And there's the sine wave output. It's pretty clean. I can't get a precise measurement on the distortion. Unfortunately, the uh, Rigel DS1054 is not that great when it comes to um, FFT mode. I can't do what John does with uh, John Audio Tech does for audio distortion testing. We've tried it on the scope a little bit, but it, best we can do is to see this little indicator way down here, you know. It's kind of a sad affair. I'm still... I know there's a zoom mode on the horizontal that I can maybe, I don't know, trying to see if there's some way to salvage making this work. Anyway, they have you go way up in frequency if you really want to see this harmonics. Um, these aren't real though. Well, these are. But, uh, yes. I'm not ready to give harmonic distortion measurements using this scope. Unfortunately. I have the generator set to 10 volts and you can see in the scope I'm getting 9.98 or something like that or 88. That's driving the uh, this little amplifier right now. I'm gonna open it up so it's open circuit. I'm gonna throw a 1k resistor across the uh, output of this thing while I watch it on the scope. Let me uh, reconnoiter my instruments. All right, let's see what happens under 1K. I think this thing is set for... It has a pretty low output impedance rating. Probably won't do much. Okay, there's 1K load on it. Yeah, we're 9.4. It's varying a little bit. Let's just say 9.4. It's fluctuating as low as 3.7 and as high as 4.4. And I take it off. Unloaded completely. And yeah, we're up to 9.95. It's probably a little high for an average. It's probably like more like 9.88, it looks like. Let's say 9.9 .9 for open circuit. Well, it's varying so much. Probably the trigger point could be adjusted or it could increase the waves. Get a steadier measurement. Yeah, let's just say 9.4, 9.9. Uh, open circuit to uh, 1K load. So I have the modulator set up. I'm going to start at 20 hertz. It's probably off that now. i got to put it back. I put it down to 5 volts just to not stress it so much because drawing it, I was actually driving the speaker directly. But now I've got a 2 ohm resistor in series with the speaker. It's kind of cool. i got my reds together, even the red stripe in the resistor, and then the black stripe and the black. So pretty. Anywho, um, a 2 ohm resistor in series with the speaker and hooked across the resistor is a voltmeter and as I vary frequency I'm going to look at the numbers in the voltmeter I'm going to start playing with this, let me see if I can dial in right here. there's 
1900s, much are gone. C56, no volts, roughly 56 and a half. Can you hear some harmonics when I turn it up? That's all I'm gonna hear is the harmonics. Down to 52 now. I'm, uh, I need to pot this out and write a note. 27 hertz. I start to hear it now. That's, that's the harmonics I'm hearing though. I really should hear it on 31. Down to 49 now, at 30. I think we're at 30. 31 now, yep. Yep. Now we're going down again. 39, micro, uh, 39 millivolts at. Pretty low resonant frequency, speaker then. 37.8, is about the lowest I go. Uh, 36.5. We can all around to be 35. 51. 50. Okay, that's my low point. Which I'll take to be our resonant frequency. At 42 hertz. That's pretty good and low for a 12 inch woofer. 42 hertz. And yeah, suspension's still pretty good. Should still be a serviceable woofer. I've got to fix the porting in this cabinet. Okay, let me measure the backs real quick. This meter is across that 2 ohm resistor, which is in series with the speaker. In series with the drive source, which is my oscillator. Right now I'm doing, um, what am I doing? I believe I'm doing 100 hertz. And my voltage is uh, roughly 58 millivolts. It's going to stay around that area. It's going to vary as I go. But there's a certain frequency called the resonant frequency of the speaker where the mechanical resonances and the electrical resonances kind of hit a null point. The speaker gets very efficient at one little frequency area, one little dip. It gets real efficient there and its impedance goes up because it doesn't need the power. It's so efficient, it doesn't need to draw any current. So it gets that efficient range, so it's drawing less current, its resistance goes up. Which means the resistance across my series resistor is going to stay steady, obviously. The voltage across my series resistor is going to go down. And the speaker across the voltage across the speaker is going to go up because the impedance of the speaker is going to go up when it hits that frequency. So frequency hits that high point, that uh, resonant point where it's very efficient. Its impedance goes up because it doesn't need that current. It's very efficient. Drawing less current and dropping less voltage across the resistor it's in series. So a number of ways to look at it. Let me start pulling down the frequency here. And with this field tech I can uh, use the ups and downs and all that but I can more easily just dial and it'll automatically go through. Okay, we can still around the 50s for millivolts here. Adjusting frequency, 56 hertz now. See my voltage turn to drop down, getting close. Down to 40 millivolts. And I'm down to what, 47 hertz right now? Now I'm to climb again. So my null is right on that 35 mark or so. To the zero. You're at 35 zero. 35, 39, I guess. So let's call that it. It's probably between these two. They both do 49 over here. I guess this one's a little more steady in the 49. So we will call it 42 hertz for my resonant frequency. And just for Yox, I'm going to try a different amplitude. Don't think it'll make any difference. Let's keep it down to 8. So I can see some distortion there. Okay, let's keep it at 8 then. It shouldn't really make any difference as far as my uh, resonant frequency though. So now we're at 57. Wait, 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 frequency. I'm still at 42, so this should be my low point. 57, unless things have changed. So I thought I'd give you a little closer look at the field tech here. Here I'm changing frequencies. And it'll automatically advance the decades and all that for me if I use the knob. If I don't use the knob, I gotta do the decades and all manually. It's kind of a pain. She's gonna blow up, Scotty! And you can change your waves, of course. And I'm the yellow wave in this display. Most of them are going to sound like a buzz because they're that ramp. 
different ramps. get back to a sine wave. There was a noise in here too somewhere. Oh well. You can also measure frequency with this a little bit. Um, I'm going to show that real quick. Go measure. Another reason I went with this model and the way it's powered and all, I figured it'd be more immune to the problem that John had with uh, current to uh, ground, AC current to ground. Um, but I have it unhooked from the scope now. If I had to hook to the scope, the scope would ground it out, so that would get rid of that problem. But ungrounded from the scope, I'm getting 18 volts here. Let's see what that does in uh, milliamps. Uh, basically nothing in milliamps. Microamp setting. And basically nothing in microamps. So that, like I said, it's one of the reasons I bought this model. Is I like the way it was powered. didn't have the internal line cord like the other model, cheaper model does. And uh, I didn't like that problem that John Audiotech had with his where he's got a slight current to ground from his uh, unit. So this unit doesn't have that. So I wanted to go over some of these controls just to show basic functions here. Wave, obviously. Measurement, that's so you can measure frequency. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. It's real simple. You just hook, uh, if I hook it to the probe to the scope, it has a one kilohertz, you can measure one kilohertz. What else can I say about that anyway? Uh, sweep, I'll have to learn how to use that, but to sweep a range of frequencies is especially useful in audio. Uh, system, I guess, I'm not sure what that does. Frequency, amplitude, offset, duty cycle, and then more. Wow, phase, attenuation, trigger, number, who knows what that does. But you get a lot of data. The thing awkward is they give it to you in kilohertz, not hertz. So you've got all these zeros you got to deal with in front of it. I don't know, it just seems kind of dumb to... Why don't they just eliminate that and put Hertz right there? <laughs> yeah, well. That's a pretty small complaint, though. Side panel. Your power is just a slide switch. And you got your uh, DC 5 volts and you got a USB input. Which I think can also power them. I should test that, I guess. External in. This is for, like, modulating or whatever else you want to do. Use this for a modulator of some sort. This is a uh, data, I.O. data, TTL level data. So I guess you could uh, get data in and out of this thing via that instead of going through USB. I don't know who would do that these days though. So it's a nice little unit. Two outputs, pretty strong output. I'll calculate the impedance and I'll get the spec on the impedance. What else haven't we covered on this meter? I think that's about it. So it looks pretty good at this point. 12 bit, 200 mega samples per second. Well, that's all I can think to cover right now. Any questions, leave them, but look it up. Probably a quick way to find out. Look it up online. Nice little unit, though. I like the metal case for RFI, you know, going in or out of this unit. That's another reason I bought the metal case. As I discussed earlier about the power issue too, doesn't have that problem, the plastic metal does. Pretty good unit. Uh, no regrets buying it, I'd just like to get a better look at distortion out of it. Maybe I can do that in the future. And for yucks, I'm going to get the uh, measurements of this cabinet. The, uh, let's call it the width, is um, 13 and a half inches. I'm just going to go inches. And I can always convert Lata. Uh, 
24 and a quarter almost and the depths to the back of the panel these are all internal measurements uh, about one foot and a quarter 12 and a quarter so if I figure out the internal volume and the resonant frequency and plug it into the right formula I can determine what size to make a port comment rate share set notification bell subscribe of course thanks for watching